Esteban. I'll call you back in a bit, buddy. It was liberating for me to be able to just act more aggressive and be uh, just a sexier person than I had been just being Dave. We're going to go by the troll over here just because I love going by the troll. On the right here is the, the troll, the Fremont troll. The Volkswagen is under his hand now was actually bright red and there was a time capsule of Elvis memorabilia that was put into the trunk. Now a lot of people think that the Space Needle is the most photographed thing in Seattle, but it's not. This is. The Pink Elephant Car Wash sign has been there since 1951. Elvis Presley had his car wash there. Presidents of the United States have had their cars washed there. And that is the most photographed thing in the city of Seattle. I picked up some passengers at Ray's Boathouse and they told me that I was in the in-flight magazine. I didn't even know, but this is the in-flight magazine for Northwest Airlines and they told me they read about me on the way into town. Magnolia News, Night of the Living Elvi, that's one of the competitions I did at the Elvis Invitational. The Seattle Style Book, a Japanese travel magazine, and uh, that's a two-page spread. This was building the, uh, the media story before I got in trouble. So that's when I got a call from my boss. So he's like, Dave, have you been dressing like Elvis in the cab? Mojo Magazine. Somebody mentioned to me that I had made it into one of the best rock and roll magazines of all time. And it's just a tiny little clip that says, uh, over in Seattle, meanwhile, cabbie Dave Groh has been threatened with fines for dressing as Vegas era Elvis. I had on this very costume here, red pants, <laughs> red, red jacket, and uh, in violation of the dress code, which requires uh, black pants and a blue shirt at that company. It was a light blue shirt. So uh, I took the ticket and I shook the guy's hand and I said, well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Seattle Weekly one is really nice. Put me in for best cab ride. David Groh has been fighting traffic and taxi cab inspectors who think his ivory jeweled high collar outfits are okay in Memphis or Vegas, but violate Seattle's dress code. So we filed a lawsuit challenging their dress code on the First Amendment grounds because, you know, it's a freedom of expression, freedom of speech. How can the city impose a dress code on somebody that doesn't work for the city? I don't even work for the cab company. Here it is. <laughs> Here's the New York Times article. It is in the A section for hire in Seattle, a rebel in rhinestones. LA Times, Seattle law ain't no friend of his. This is the front page of Los Angeles Times, their Sunday copy. So the city attorney got a hold of my attorney and asked would I drop the lawsuit if they changed the law. And of course, that's, I never tried to sue for any money. I wasn't out for any monetary gain. I just wanted to be able to wear the Elvis costume because it brought me a lot of joy to bring that much happiness to everybody else. I mean, when people see me in traffic, it just, just often, just the people right across from me be like, hey, look, there's Elvis. And, and they, then they smile and, and light up and, and uh, you know, you never know, <laughs> hi there. <laughs> Sometimes it's bus drivers or garbage collectors, you know, just people walking down the street with their kids be like, oh, look, there goes Elvis. And you know, that, that, that pool, that reservoir of love that Elvis left behind, it's bottomless.
channeling the king too often, you know, allowing his presence to affect my decision making, I'll say. Sex and drugs and rock and roll was something I wasn't really accustomed to before that. But now all of a sudden it's around all the time. I wound up actually getting some regular customers that <clears throat> knew I was cool as far as that. I let them smoke in the car and, and they'd make their run up to get the harder stuff. And the next thing I know, they're offering me, you know, a hit on the crack pipe on the way back from where they're picking it up each time. And then if you want to come inside and smoke some with us, and then now I know where to get it, and, and I've met the people on both ends of that, so now I've developed a connection where instead of going to work, I were, I'd go to work and I'd make 40 bucks, and I'd call somebody up and have them bring me some crack, and I'd sit in my house for three days and smoke that instead of working. So that almost killed me. And then I had to leave town. I needed to take the geographical cure to get away from the, the dark side of Elvis. I still wear the costumes now, mostly just on the weekends. People just love to get in the car and they, they see, you know, they, they have no idea. They just called for a cab. Maybe they're going on the airport, maybe they're going to the hotel. But they open that sliding door and they see me sitting here in the Elvis costume. And then they see I've got karaoke on and they're like, all right, this is already the best cab ride of my life. Mm. Oh, oh. <laughs> An old man turned Time is right, your perfume fills my head The stars get red in all the night so blue It's a terror with no one the world about Watching some good friends we love you Some will win, some will lose Do you like love or hate Yelp? What do you think about Yelp? The stars put the Beatles on, all that she talking about I'm up for discussion, baby, 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 no reduction <laughs> You feel like Seattle's getting more misanthropic and like people are more like distrustful of like sort of the good nature of their man. Am I gonna be a cab driver for the rest of my life? I don't know. Probably for the rest of my life in one way or another. I'm going to want to put the Elvis costume on and bring the joy. I'm fortunate that I've been able to tap into this reservoir of love that, that he left behind. What men say Only fools run but I can't help falling in love with you. Take my hand, take my whole life to Falling in love